Hey healers! First off, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for subscribing. We've hit 1,000 subscribers going into launch, and I'll be sure to keep updated healer content going for everyone. And for today's video, with launch quickly approaching, I wanted to give you guys a couple of leveling build options. Also, don't forget, if you like my videos, please consider liking and subscribing to catch future healing content. I also stream on Twitch if you want to catch me live. The link for that and my community Discord are in the description below. So for all the builds, I'm not really going to go into secondary weapons, as I think that you should pick one that caters to a playstyle that you like and have fun with. After all, isn't that what we're all here to do? Also, please keep in mind that this is a leveling build, not a PvP or dungeon build, and it's meant to be changed after you hit cap or are specking for other content. For the first build, I'm going to give you guys a sort of all-around great leveling build. It works for solo content and group content in a way that you don't need to worry about constantly mixing up your build if you play with friends on and off. I actually gave this build out in a collab with Duke Sloth. Be sure to check out the Lifestyle video we made on his channel as well. And if you've already seen this build, feel free to skip ahead to see more specific solo and group healing builds for leveling. So for this all-around leveling build, I'm going to start off by taking the single target heal, Divine Embrace. And hear me out here, even though this skill has a small cast time compared to the instant cast of Light's Embrace from the Protector's Tree, it is still your most mana efficient single target heal for the time being. And as your first active skill, it will essentially replace your need for health potions entirely since you can spam it on yourself, which I think makes this skill very convenient while you level. My next choice is actually a passive, Absolved, taking away the mana cost on my auto attacks, which allows me to heal both myself and teammates more efficiently. I then pick up Sacred Ground for a nice AoE ground heal. And for my last active skill, I grab Orb of Protection, which is great at the start, but I'll change it later for Beacon to give higher sustainability through my healing output. Next, I take Blissful Touch, making my light attacks heal in a small AoE radius, and Revitalize for a cooldown reduction. I then take the first passive for Orb of Protection, Protector's Blessing, allowing the skill to give me a small heal over time to anyone hit by it, including myself if I hit my feet. I also pick up Bend Light and Protector's Touch before I spick out of Orb of Protection and move my last active skill over to Beacon. Beacon is a great versatile skill that does a very small amount of damage to enemies in the radius and provides a large AoE heal that can be hooked onto allies or enemies. When you stack it with Sacred Ground, it does amazing healing that can top you off in seconds. I like this skill more for an all-around leveling build because I feel as though it is very useful when playing with friends, and also great when I solo since I can stand in it while grouping mobs together. I'll now take the two passives for Sacred Ground, allowing it to regen my mana and stamina, and give it a huge heal boost to all the heals inside it. I'll also take the first two passives for Beacon, increasing its radius and duration. I then take Intensify and Sacred Protection from the Healing Tree, increasing my overall healing output through heavy attacks by just holding my life staff. I'll also take the first two passives for Divine Embrace to make it into a multi-target heal and to reduce its overall mana cost, letting this skill continue to be efficient in cost while leveling up. I take Divine Blessing now, and I take this final passive a bit later down the road since when I'm solo leveling, it's not as practical, and now that my group mates and I are doing harder content, it makes more sense to utilize the extra healing efficiency when we need it most. I'll also take the two available passives for Haste, Speed of Light, and Balance, giving me that little speed boost when skirting out of dangerous situations. The next leveling build I want to go over is for those of you planning to level solo. A great part about New World is that as a life staff user and a healer, you can level on your own. You do enough damage to secure kills on mobs and have enough self-sustain to stay alive while doing it. That being said, the first skill I take for my solo leveling build is Divine Embrace. It easily replaces almost all of your HP pot usage and is great for using on yourself when mobs start getting really aggressive. The next skill I take is a passive, Absolved, because as you'll notice quickly while auto-attacking mobs, your mana bar is going to drop rapidly. This passive is amazing because you can now either spam heals more effectively, or if you're using a secondary weapon such as the Ice Gauntlet or the Fire Staff, you now have more mana to put into damage skills. The next skill I take is Sacred Ground. Solo leveling, at least for me, means having multiple enemies on me at any given time, and kiting them back into Sacred Ground while dealing damage with my offhand feels amazing. I'll be upgrading the skill's passives later down the road too, as the final passive for it puts out insane amounts of healing that should allow you to feel very safe and protective while you annihilate mobs getting to cap. The last active skill I'm taking is Orb of Protection. 
I like that I'm able to use this skill while I'm on the run, and that by taking its second passive, Protector's Blessing, I turn it into a heal over time that I can aim at my feet to heal myself, or at enemies if I'm topped off to deal some pretty decent damage. It also gives you Fortify, which is a 10% damage reduction buff that lasts for 20 seconds, which is great. After this, I'm going to pick up that first passive of Sacred Ground, Holy Ground, which is simply awesome due to the mana and stamina regen it offers. This means that while you kite those mobs back into Sacred Ground for healing, you're also regenerating mana to deal even more damage. Next, I'm going to pick up the Bend Light passive from the Protector's Tree. Solo leveling means I'm constantly dodging to kite mobs, and this 20% heal boost with my dodge feels great and activates often. After that, I'll pick up Protector's Touch, ensuring that anytime I don't have Fortify up from Orb of Protection, I'll have it up from just auto-attacking. Remember, damage you prevent is damage you do not need to heal. Now, I'm picking up Protector's Strength, ensuring that I have a 100% uptime on Fortify now that I'm healing myself for 10% more from all sources of healing. Next is Revitalize, giving me a pretty substantial cooldown reduction while spamming light auto attacks, which is a great filler when waiting for damage skills to come off cooldown on your secondary weapon. I'm finally going to pick up that last passive in Sacred Ground, giving myself 50% more healing from all my heals when I'm standing in the AoE. At this point, mobs aren't going to do much of anything to me. Then, I'm going to pick up the first passive for Divine Embrace, Privilege. This mana cost reduction will up my overall efficiency while doing damage and self-sustaining. I don't need the last two passives for this skill while solo leveling, so I can use those points elsewhere. I'm now going to grab Intensify to give my heavy attacks a little more oomph in the healing department. Then I'm going to grab Balance for a nice haste boost while I'm below 50% health, and Spirits United for increased mana regen. I also pick up Glowing Focus to extend my defensive and healing buffs. And for this build, the last three skills are really up to you. I feel as though the last few points for this build don't make the biggest overall impact, so I take Defensive Light, Mending Touch, and Enchanted Justice. This build will really do the job well for solo content, keeping your health and mana bars up, and by extension allowing you to focus on dealing damage to mobs. The final build I'm going to go over is the group leveling build. If you've made it through your starter quests and you're planning on exclusively leveling with a friend or a small group of friends, then this is the perfect build for you. Since leveling with other people means you aren't necessarily the highest damage dealer in your group, you can really focus your skills around healing and sustaining your group mates. For this build, the first skill I'm going to pick up is a passive, Absolved, taking away the mana requirement for your light and heavy auto attacks. Next, I'm going to pick up my first active skill, Sacred Ground. This is really the bread and butter of your kit, as having both passives into this skill allow you to do massive healing on your group while providing them with significant mana and stamina regen. Next, I'll take Blissful Touch, turning all of my light attacks into a small AoE heal. After that, I'll work on getting my next two active skills in the Protector Tree. To do this, I'll first grab Bend Light, giving me a small heal boost every time I dodge, which feels amazing. Then, I'll pick up Beacon, which is a large AoE heal skill, and unlike with Sacred Ground, Beacon can actually attach to targets, which is great if you and your friends are running from quest to quest. It can also stack with Sacred Ground for insane healing output. Next, I'll grab Light's Embrace, which is an instant cast single target heal. Not only can I heal teammates with it, I can also heal myself. It is a bit more mana costly when compared to Divine Embrace, but since I can be a little bit more liberal with my mana, since I have groupmates dealing damage for me as well, that mana can be used for faster healing instead. Next, I'll hop over and grab the first two passives for Sacred Ground, Holy Ground, and Blessed. This will give my groupmates better regen for mana and stamina, and a 50% boost to all my healing done inside the AoE. Then, I'll take the first two passives for Beacon, Infused Light, and Radiance's Blessing, increasing its duration and area of effect. I'll then take the Healing Tree passives, Revitalize, Sacred Protection, and Intensify for both a chunky cooldown reduction and overall better healing output. Next, I take Enchanted Justice and Desperate Seed for even further healing output. And finally grab Divine Blessing, which gives me a huge boost when healing lower health allies. The last two passives I'll pick up are Speed Passives, Speed of Light and Balance, giving a small haste boost to myself and allies in various situations. This build feels great in group leveling content, easily keeping you and all your groupmates topped off through almost any situation. And that's it for the three builds! I hope you were able to find one that suits your playstyle, and of course passives can be swapped around situationally if needed. 
I'm excited to get down to leveling at launch and hope to see you all there. I'll catch you all next time.